Hey guys, what's going on dudes? It is David here. We are back with another video. Now in this video guys, we shall be discussing F1. Now when it comes to F1, what we'll be discussing today is going to be the battle for the championship that is most likely going to be between the two drivers. One drives for Red Bull, one drives for Ferrari. And we're going to be taking a look at their results and where they are currently in the standings and why I think it's going to be coming down to these two when it comes to for the 2022 F1 Championship. Now these two specific drivers I'm talking about is Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. One drives for Red Bull, one drives for Ferrari, and now let's take a look at the results for both of them through the first seven to eight races of the season. The first race was the Bahrain race. Charles Leclerc ended up picking up the win, winning Bahrain. Max Verstappen was going to have a point stay, but ultimately both Red Bulls ended up retiring. Now it does put an asterisk around 19th place for Max Verstappen because he kind of retired on the final lap. So he technically did not retire, but he still did in the same in general spot. But he ended up finishing 19th, not scoring any points. The second race, which was the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc ended up finishing in second with Max Verstappen getting the win. Now this was a moment where you expected like this is gonna be happening for the rest of the season. But when we get into the next couple of races, you would never expect what happens between these two because after Max Verstappen wins in Saudi, he ends up retiring in Australia and Charles Leclerc gets the win. So both times that Max Verstappen has retired from a race, Charles Leclerc has gone on to win this race. But then Max Verstappen turned on the burners and won three straight races. First in Italy and Imola, first in Miami and first in Spain. Meanwhile, Charles Leclerc did only have one good finish and that was a second place in Miami. The other two finishes, he had a sixth place in Imola, which is Ferrari's first of their two home Grand Prix, so that's a disappointing race for Ferrari. And then in Spain, he ended up retiring due to mechanical issue. So, not going ever since that win in Australia, Leclerc has been on kind of a downhill slope, and it kind of continued. Even though both of them did not finish first and second in in Monaco, they still ended up finishing third and fourth. So they still ended up finishing right in front of each other. Now, if we remember, Sergio Perez was the winner of the Monaco Grand Prix. But this still means that Max Verstappen stayed ahead of Charles Leclerc. And by this point, Max Verstappen was almost ahead. I think, no, I think he was just about ahead of Charles Leclerc. And then we had last race in Baku. Max Verstappen won the race. It was a 1-2 for Red Bull, and that is due to both Ferraris retiring from this race, both from mechanical issues. Charles Leclerc, I think he retired on lap, oh, I think he retired like in the first part of the race, but it's still kind of disappointing to see that Ferraris had so many reliability issues, and I think there was only one Ferrari uh, powered car that was still running by the end, I think that was Mick Schumacher, or I think it was Mick Schumacher, I'm not really, under, I'm, I'm not really sure who was only a uh, Ferrari powered car remaining in that race, but Ferrari have not had good reliability issues. And so what does this mean for the season so far? Well, the top three in standings is Max Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc was second at before Baku. Now he's third. Now, how far is Charles Leclerc behind Max Verstappen in the standings? Well, with Max Verstappen have five wins on the seasons, six podiums, Compared to Charles Leclerc, two wins and four podiums, Max Verstappen is a total of 34 points ahead of Charles Leclerc in the standings. Second is his teammate, who ended up finishing right behind him in Baku, and his teammate is only 21 points back. So if Max Verstappen were to retire from a race and Sergio Perez were to win this race, let's say Canada, which is going to be this weekend, Canada qualifying, which is going to be today as I'm recording this, Let's say Max Verstappen tomorrow does not finish the race. Sergio Perez ends up going on to win this race, and Charles Leclerc gets second. Sergio Perez would be the leader of the championship for the first time, I think, in his career. And that'd be a very good thing because Checo has really turned on another level this season, and he's been running very, very consistently. He has one, po he has one win, which is Monaco, 
but he has five podiums. He has one more podium than Leclerc. So he's been very consistent, and this is the reason why he's only 21 points back of Max Verstappen in the point standings. But then we look at the rest. George Russell is 51 points back, so George Russell is more than two wins behind Max Verstappen. And we haven't even gotten into fifth place, which is the second Ferrari, who's had nothing but issues. And unfortunately, they've been mostly reliability issues from the Ferrari engine, and that's Carlos Sainz who is a total of 67 points back. Let me get this in mind. He's 33 points behind his teammate, and his teammate is 34 points behind the Fer the Red Bull Max Verstappen. This is not turning out to be good for Ferrari. Now, I have yet to see because qualifying has not started yet, but Ferrari somehow managed to pull a 1-2. I'm still not going to look into anything until the race happens because Leclerc has had four straight podiums, and look where it's gotten him. His four podiums was in Miami, Spain, Monaco, Baku. Second, retired. Fourth, retired. So you can't really predict anything that's going to happen when it comes to F1. And the remaining two of the top seven is George, uh, Lewis Hamilton with 88, 88 points behind Max Verstappen. And Lando Norris minus 100 behind with Lando and Hamilton only having one podium. Surprisingly, Carlos Sainz has four podiums. So he actually has more podiums than his teammate. But still... It, actually, sorry, he has the same amount of podiums as his teammates. He's one behind Sergio Perez, and then George Russell has three podiums. But George Russell has been a lot consistent. The Mercedes hasn't been good. And I recently heard that the the FIA changed the rules so there's not more por uh, porpoising because apparently Lewis Hamilton has had really bad back issues due to the amount of porpoising that's been going on for the past couple circuits. But looking at these results, Max Verstappen has only had two bad results. Same thing goes with Charles Leclerc having two bad results in Spain and Baku. But that sixth and that fourth place, that sixth place, especially in Imola, is really, really costing Charles Leclerc. And another thing that's probably costing Charles Leclerc in the championship is Ferrari's strategy. strategy. Because if the Ferrari strategy was better in terms of the Monaco Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc would have won this home race because he started on pole and he ended up finishing fourth place. He didn't even finish on the podium. And that's due down to Ferrari's strategy. But if I got to look at this and determine who I think is going to be the winner of the 2022 at Formula 1 Championship, based off reliability and the strength of the schedule and the way the cars have been going, I'm going to say Max Verstappen is going to become a two-time world champion unless, unless the wild card factor is, which is his teammate, can pick up the spots and maybe Max Verstappen has some reliability issues coming on. If that's the case... It's going to be a three-car battle for the championship. I just don't see Carlos Sainz getting involved in the championship battle with the amount of issues that he's had. But anything is possible. We still got a whole left rest of the season to finish. And it'll be interesting to see on who can become the 2022 Formula 1 World Drivers' Champion.